All right, good morning everybody. I'm Maria and welcome or welcome back to my nook. Today I'm starting yet another reading vlog. Recently I've been reading a lot of Veronica Speedwell and that is a series by Deanna Rayborn. I've recently finished the third book in the series, A Treacherous Curse, and it's a historical fiction with mystery and a bit of romance and I've been reading the first three books in that series very close together so now I kind of feel like I need to read something else I feel like reading something else even though I'm genuinely really enjoying the Veronica Speedwell series but sometimes you just gotta mix it up a bit you know and fortunately for me, <laughs> a hold from my library via Libby came through. And even more fortunately for me, it is also the book club pick of the month of the Wyverns and Words book club that is run by Katie is Reading and Cassandra Lynn. So that means I can already read it and hopefully take it off my July TBR, you know? <laughs> Which is always great to be ahead of the schedule sometimes, you know? And the book I'm talking about, by the way, is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. I hope I did not completely butcher the name of the author. This book, I believe, is based on Asian folklore or Asian myths or something like that. I'm not incredibly informed about it, but I have read the synopsis to this book and I have also already read the first two chapters, which means I'm... Why did I show three? Two. The first two chapters. Which means I'm about 7% into the book. It's not much, but it's a start, you know. I just started the book. <laughs> and so far, I'm a tiny bit conflicted, but I feel like it's an entirely personal issue, just for me, you know? So what's been happening in these first two chapters? So there's our main character, Mina, and in this world she lives in, there's all these gods, for lots of different things but the most important god is basically the sea god and lately like for a lot of years already if i've gathered that correctly there have been a lot of issues for mina and her people like hunger and war and weather catastrophes and you know stuff like that <laughs> like actually really bad things happening to her people and her people believe that their sea god is kind of upset and now they basically have to give or sacrifice depending on what you believe a bride to him every year so like once a year they basically throw a woman into the sea hoping that the sea god will take her for bride and that she will be the one bride of the sea god and he will be soothed and finally like grant the people their wishes of like less hunger, less war, you know? <laughs> and this year, apparently the girl who was chosen to be the sea god's bride was the girlfriend of Mina's brother. And there's rules to these ceremonies. I guess they're not really ceremonies, but these events, people get on a boat with that sea bride girl and get out into the sea, you know? And there's supposed to be no warrior on the boat. There's supposed to be no other women except for the sea bride on the boat and no weapons, 
Those are the three rules, apparently. And this year, since the girlfriend of Mina's brother was kind of chosen, I don't even know how they choose their sea brides, but I guess they choose their sea brides somehow. Mina's brother went with her because he was like, I can let her face this alone. And so Mina went after her brother <laughs> and sacrificed herself in place of Mina's brother's girlfriend as the sea bride. It's a bit confusing if I'm telling it to you, right? But like, reading it, it made sense. Sort of. <laughs> and now Mina has basically arrived in the realm of the sea god. She's basically standing in front of the sea god right now. That's where I stopped reading. And the thing is that so far it feels a lot like a book I've read before. In... oh my god, I think it was... Gen no, February. In February... I've read Six of... no, not Six of Crows. Six Crimson Cranes. Sometimes I confuse these two titles in my brain. But I mean, they are kind of close, right? Anyway, I read Six Crimson Cranes in February by Elizabeth Lim. <laughs> and then I read the sequel, which is The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim. And in these two books, there's a lot of talk about like this red ribbon of fate and the dragon realm deep down underneath the sea. In the second book, the main character even goes into the realm of the dragons. I don't know, but so far the girl who fell beneath the sea feels a lot like Six Crimson Cranes and especially the dragon's promise. There's a lot of... I mean, it makes sense because these books are probably based on the same or similar myths or folklore. But there's a lot of the same talk of the same myths and beliefs and stuff in like the exact same way. I can't quite describe it. I mean, on the other hand, if I'm reading a book that's based on like western beliefs they're all also the same you know what i mean so it makes sense but i don't know just with this plot and the combination of that plot and these myths I don't know, it just feels so similar to me so far. I'm only at chapter 2, maybe I shouldn't judge so quickly. Maybe I will still enjoy the book for it being its own book. I'm also not quite sure about the writing style yet because I don't know what it is, but in some points it feels so simple and in other points it feels more flowery and poetic and I'm like... This is kind of an odd mix, but maybe I'll just need to get used to it. So I think those are all of my first impressions on this book. And I'll keep reading and hopefully enjoy it. I'll probably update you again once I've read a decent amount. <laughs> Alright, hello everybody. It is the next day now and I have a reading update for you. I am 26% into The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. <laughs> that title is a mouthful, honestly. But I'm a few pages into chapter 10 by now and 
I think I've been turned around. My opinion has been turned around on this book. I know I said at the beginning that it feels very similar, maybe even a bit too similar to Six Crimson Cranes and The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim. And I didn't really feel like wanting to read a book that felt just like a book I had already read, you know? <laughs> but the book is definitely different and it's definitely its own story, which I'm very happy about. And okay, what happened since I last updated you? So the last time we spoke, our main character Mina had just arrived in this underwater realm and she had just sort of met the sea god and found out that he's in a deep sleep drugged kind of state like he's unconscious very unconscious and this is not a spoiler it literally says that in the synopsis of the book <laughs> but she wasn't able to be his bride in that sort of sense and then three people showed up that first of all Mina described to look very young like basically about her age and she's 16 if I remember correctly but I do have a suspicion that they might be much older technically than 16 and they only look 16 you know that sort of thing and at first mina thought they were assassins or something because they weren't exactly treating her kindly i can't really tell you what they did because i feel like that would be a spoiler but they did something to her and basically gave her a sort of like mission or task and then they just went off. So these three people, their names are Lord Kirin, Lord Shin and Namji and Mina basically went into this town that apparently is part of the spirit realm and as far as I understood, the spirit realm is the place where like souls go to that didn't get to the world of the dead, I suppose. Like in Mina's culture, they believe that when a person dies, they're being set on this journey down a river and like towards the world of the dead and if their soul resists or like strains against traveling to the world of the dead they're going into the spirit realm i hope i understood that correctly and i hope i explained that correctly <laughs> but i think that's it and that spirit realm is where Mina is currently at. In that town, she met townspeople, basically, like spirits. And they explained a few things to her and told her a few things. The townspeople told her that the three people Mina met are in fact not assassins. Like apparently they're lord. Two of them are lords. And one of them was being called a thief by one of the townspeople. Don't know what that's about yet, but if I'm being honest, those three guys, Lord Kirin, Lord Shin, and Namji, are the most intriguing characters so far. Like, they're so mysterious, kind of. Not just kind of, they're mysterious. And there's so many things we're slowly getting to know about them, which intrigues me so much and I'm so curious about them and I really hope that we will get more screen time <laughs> like page time of them throughout the book just now Mina has tried to accomplish her mission task basically but something went wrong and now she is basically bound to Lord Shin 
in a certain way that I'm not gonna say how but it's very intriguing and this is basically what got me like now I'm sold I think now I'm sold like now I'm just so intrigued and interested how this is going to continue and I'm really excited now to continue this book so that's what I'm gonna do now <laughs> It is three days later since I last updated you and I would say I've made some good reading progress. I'm now a little bit over halfway through The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. <laughs> it's still a bit of a mouthful, that title. And I just finished chapter 17 uh, last night. Honestly, there's not that much I can tell you except that I'm enjoying the book. I don't quite know what it is about the book, but it's so sort of like whimsical and the vibes, there are these vibes, you know what I mean? That just do it for me and I'm really enjoying it at the moment. Since we last talked, the main character, Mina, has made small, but I would say steady, progress in her goal to kind of save the sea god from his curse or his state of unconsciousness, whatever it is, we still haven't quite found out. And she's been getting the help of a few people, for example, the townspeople that she met right at the beginning. They're starting to become a little mysterious and I find it very intriguing. She's also been getting more and more help from Lord Shin and we've been finding out more and more about him which I find incredibly interesting. I already mentioned it at the beginning that I thought Shin, Kirin and Namji were the most intriguing characters at the beginning and honestly I still feel like they're the most intriguing characters in the story so far. So unlike every time they happen to be on the page and our main character interacts with them or there's some sort of interaction between them, you know, I find it so incredibly interesting and entertaining. There's maybe, possibly some romance kindling, although I'm not sure because I'm not sure if this is a fantasy romance book. I don't even know if there is a romance subplot. So maybe I'm just reading too much into it and I'll get disappointed, but I'm seeing something there, you know what I mean? And I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> so I don't know, there hasn't been that much plot going on, I feel like. I mean, stuff has been happening, but it's a lot of stuff like back and forth and Mina trying this and trying that and then finding out that this was not a good idea and this failed and that this attempt did not work out. You know, that sort of thing. So I feel like her trying to achieve her goal and her like mission at the moment is a lot of trial and error so we haven't been making a lot of progress forward but we've still been making progress i think it's a bit hard to explain but like sometimes trying something and then failing at it 
is still progress towards your goal because then you know what doesn't work out and you can find something else that will work out. So I feel like that's kind of what's been going on in the book so far. And yeah, I don't know, the vibes are just there and I'm enjoying it. I feel like it's also a pretty easy read. The writing style is such an odd mix. I think I've mentioned this before, but it just flows really nicely. It's just, I don't know, for me it's just really easy to read so far and I'm really enjoying that, so I'm definitely looking forward to continuing reading the book today. Hello everybody, I am here to wrap up this vlog because I have indeed finished The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Oh. I read the last 122 pages in one day, which is a lot for my standards. I normally read about maybe 20 to 60-ish pages on average per day. So reading 122 pages in one day is so much for my standards. I basically did very little else other than reading, <laughs> which was nice, but it also always takes a little bit of effort for me to read that much in a day, you know? But I just kind of wanted to finish the book, not because it was a bad book, but I feel like lately I'm really feeling this whole too little time, too many good books thing. It's just that I have so many books on my TBR and so many good books I really want to get to that even when I'm reading a book I'm enjoying, I'm like... I want to have this done so I can get to the next book I will be enjoying, hopefully. And maybe I'm stressing myself out a little too much. I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. I'm trying not to be too hard on myself when I'm taking a bit longer to finish a book. But yeah, sometimes I'm just like, oh my gosh, I've already taken seven days to finish the book, which is like totally fine. But my brain, you know, <laughs> anyway, a few conclusive thoughts on The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. I have talked about it with other people since this was a book club pick. And I've mentioned this at the beginning, I believe, that it felt a lot like Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim to me at the beginning. And now I've heard from other people that they have felt the same way, which I'm very glad about, that it wasn't just me. But the book soon became very different and I really enjoyed that. It was a very fast-paced book in my opinion and really easy to read, which I definitely liked. On the other hand, it felt a little bit too easy or too light sometimes. A lot of things and plot twists were rather predictable in my opinion. I personally predicted a lot of things that happened in this book, like compared to how many things I predict in other books, it was a lot in this book that I managed to predict. And I saw somebody online saying that oftentimes there was just not enough time given to feel the emotions we were supposed to feel as readers, and I absolutely agree with that. Sometimes that just kind of took away the emotional impact or it resulted in the emotional impact missing a little bit. Additionally, I felt as if the author 
had a brainstorming session and came up with all these ideas and then just kind of tried to squeeze all of them into the same book even though some of the ideas could have been kept for another book or maybe discarded entirely but instead it just felt as if the author tried to put too many ideas into the same plot especially considering that this is a rather short standalone fantasy novel maybe this plot would have been better off as a longer book or maybe even a duology at some point the main character had so many different goals and went through so many iterations of her mission that i wasn't entirely sure anymore what to root for and the last like 25 percent of the book loki felt a bit like a fever dream with everything that happened it might have been impacted a little bit by me reading so much of the book in a single day which again is not the usual case for me but there was just so much happening in the end and at some point I was like does this plot ever end? oh my gosh <laughs> and honestly I could not summarize this plot if I tried like don't even ask me about it <laughs> And then I felt like there was a lot of telling instead of showing, especially in the way that characters literally, word for word, told us which character traits they have. Sometimes characters would literally say, for example, I'm a brave person who doesn't shy away from a challenge but I can also be very stubborn and that's why I sometimes push away the people that I care about, you know, stuff like that and I thought that it maybe would have been better to not tell us these things by having your characters tell them to us and instead just have them shown through the characters' actions. The vibes of the book were amazing though. They were so whimsical and magical and like the main character was in this underwater kind of realm where there was just fish swimming around and stuff like that. That was amazing and I feel like the vibes were probably the biggest strength of this book so I would definitely recommend it for the vibes, maybe not the plot. All in all I think I'll give this book maybe 3.5 or 3.75 stars. I enjoyed the book. 3.5 or 3.75 stars is not a bad rating, it's almost 4 stars. But it just wasn't quite a 4 star read, you know? I enjoyed it, but it has its flaws, so yeah. I would recommend it if you're in for vibes. <laughs> And yeah, with that, I will let you guys go now after having talked for like way too long again. <laughs> I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy, maybe give this video a thumbs up and perhaps subscribe to my channel. Maybe comment down below if you have read this book and what you thought about it. Or if you haven't read the book, just let me know what you're currently reading or anything else you want to tell me. Otherwise, I will see you guys somewhere else on the internet. Bye!